So, I welcome you to the fourth module of the course titled Psychology of Emotion Theory and Applications. So, the f module 4 is about this uh, self conscious emotions and uh, we have already discussed one lecture under this module that is lecture 8. Today, we will uh, talk about lecture number 9 where we will be talking about primarily social comparison emotion. So, before we uh, talk about today's lecture, let me uh, give you a brief recap of the last lecture that we have discussed, uh, where we have discussed in the last lecture, uh, we introduced the concept of self conscious emotions. In that we have discussed self conscious emotions are primarily those emotions which are which arises uh, uh, from the sense of from the sense of self with the development of the sense of self within an individual. So, somewhere with the progression of age, the sense of self a separate individual develops and with the development of the sense of self, certain emotion complex emotions also develops out of those. So, those are called as self conscious emotions. Now, under self conscious emotions primarily with the development of the concept of self, uh, two basic mental abilities develop. One is about self evaluation, another is about social comparison. So, the development of the concept of self, we can evaluate ourselves based on certain internal standards and judge ourselves and this may lead to certain complex emotional processes. Similarly, with the development of the concept of self, we can also compare ourselves with the others because the sense of self as a separate individual develops. So, now we can compare ourselves with the others. So, with the process, with the development of the social comparison process, also certain uh, associated emotions, complex emotions also develops like envy, jealousy. So, these are all related to social comparison and self evaluative emotions that we have discussed uh, in the last class includes three main uh, self, uh, self evaluative emotions. These are shame, guilt and embarrassment. Uh, so, we have discussed the detailed about all these emotions. Shame is primarily, you know, uh, sorry, uh, guilt primarily arises when, uh, you know, a person believes that he has done something wrong or he has he or she has violated certain moral standards or ethical standards. Shame on the other hand is mostly associated with uh, when we perceive that our sense of uh, you know certain inadequacies or certain flaws are exposed in front of others and this leads led to the uh, negative evaluation of oneself in terms of you know uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, lack of worthiness, uh, lack of self esteem and so on. So, there is, there, there is a global evaluation of uh, sense of oneself in terms of uh, that lack of you know, you know inadequacy or inadequacy or unworthiness and all these all these kinds of evaluation are associated with the sense of shame. Embarrassment on the other hand arises primarily based on certain situational awkwardness where you uh, unintentionally violate certain uh, moral, uh, certain social norms associated with a particular situation. This leads to, uh, you know, uh, that suddenly one becomes a center of attention of other people and one behaves submissively and so on. So, embarrassment is more situational, shame is more intense and it is more long lasting and it has more evaluation of oneself's in terms of one one ordiness and those kind of thing you know uh, is associated with the shame. So, shame is more deeper, more long lasting, more intense as compared to embarrassment which is more situational, temporary and more milder. So, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last class. So, uh, so today we will be talking about uh, uh, mostly about social comparison emotion and one self evaluative emo emotions that we have not covered in the last class that is pride. So, we will be talking about pride as one of the self evaluative emo emotion today and we will be talking about two social comparison emotions these are envy and jealousy. So, let us start today's lecture. So, uh, pride as an emotion is again it is a self evaluative emotion. So, we evaluate ourselves here in this case it is positive self it arises out of positive self evaluation. So, this emotion of pride arises from so positive evaluation of oneself. So, when we evaluate ourselves positively because for whatever reason it may uh, it may involve uh, meeting certain personal standards or achieving certain goals or some internal beliefs about that I have done something wrong uh, something right or whatever it is. Now, so, based on that uh, positive evaluation pride as an emotion is experienced. So, when we talk about pride we need to 
kind of distinguish between two categories of pride because uh, most of the times when people talk about pride they kind of mix both of them so in the literature uh, pride has two distinct aspects so these are one is called as an authentic pride or simply pride and another is called as hubristic pride so these are two kind of uh, different aspects of pride which should be distinguished in order to understand the concepts properly so pride when we talk about in general or authentic pride in this context is basically characterized by a sense of accomplishment in a specific task or behavior so generally when you feel good about yourself so there is a positive evaluation which arises from sense of accomplishment of something or doing something that you think that based on your internal standard you have done something right all these things or sense of satisfaction arises out of whatever you have done all this can lead to sense of pride uh, which is a natural outcome of positive self evaluation the concept of hubris is another concept that is associated with the pride here it is mostly with associated with certain negative aspects such as outcomes uh, negative outcomes such as aggression hostility while pride is linked to certain uh, positive outcomes such as increased motivation self efficacy productivity and so on so why this difference because the concept of hubris is characterized by self satisfied arrogance towards the towards one self in general so the concept of hubris is also associated with pride but here the sense of arrogance is associated with it so that is the main uh, aspect which distinguishes hubris from the pride so in the pride one may be just feeling good about whatever they have done with a sense of accomplishment in the concept of hubris is associated with certain uh, arrogance and sense of ego is associated with it which can lead to certain negative outcomes uh, such as aggression and hostility and so on so this is kind of one could be more negative oriented one could be more little bit positively oriented aspects of the pride now excessive hubris obviously we all know that can lead to various negative outcomes as we have discussed aggression hostility from the persons involved in the expression of the hubris and it can lead to various negative as outcomes in the social situations which may lead to social rejection conflict and so on because it is associated with sense of arrogance and egoism which is negatively evaluated by other people in the society so therefore it is important to distinguish these two aspects when we talk about pride in order to understand the diverse aspects of it how pride as an emotion is expressed through the body and face and so on so this is also kind of very important uh, for every emotion expression is very important as we have uh, seen that basic emotions are primarily expressed through face facial expression uh, but uh, self conscious emotions are more complex so their expressions are also more complex so they involve not only just face they involve face head movement body uh, gestures and so on so their expressions are also much more complex as compared to the basic emotions so expression of pride is typically uh, it is accompanied uh, by gestures such as smile a backward tilt of the head lifting of the chin and either placing the hands on the hips or raising them above the head to indicate confidence or victory so these are some of the common gestures or expressions that are associated with the emotion of pride so it involves people generally smile because there is an happiness out of whatever you have done so pride is associated with a smile a backward tilt of the head lifting of the chin and placing hands either on the hips or somewhere raising the head hand above the head so it indicates some kind of victory or some kind of sense of achievement and so on so typically you know just i'll uh, show it one of the slide where it is expressed so this is a typical expression of you know pride where people can express it through the face through the gestures of the body and so on uh, so whatever description we have it is it can be seen in the picture itself so the expression of pride uh, is uh, generally also kind of identified in various cultures very similarly so we'll talk about that here so the gesture is observed spontaneously even in children as young as 3 years of age even children as young as 3 years of age can express the emotion of pride 
with some of these expressions. And uh, it has also been observed that you know people from diverse cultures, even people who are blind from the birth, they could also ex they also express similarly uh, when they want to express pride as an emotion. So, a lot of actually cross cultural studies have shown that even uh, both literate individuals, some of the studies uh, indicate that even literate individuals in the US and illiterate African tribe member who had very minimal exposure to the western culture can also recognize this gesture of pride with accuracy greater than chance. So, it kind of indicates that you know this gesture could be kind of an universal expression you know. So, even uh, most of these uh, self conscious emotions may not be universe they can be very different in different cultures. Uh, but pride seems to be the expression of pride seems to be very common and uh, identified by people in different cultures. People who are literate, illiterate, people who are even blind also could kind of a kind of express uh, very similarly the emotion of pride. So, what is the function of the emotion of pride? Why people express pride as an emotion? So, the idea of uh, every emotion, the idea of evolutionary idea is that every emotion has its own functions it serves certain purposes that is why it has evolved in in us. So, every emotion has its own function. So, we have we have been discussing whatever emotion in the earlier lectures also we are discussing the functions of each of this emotion. So, let us see what are the functions of emotion of pride why people express pride and what function it does. So, it is possible that pride evolved as a means of conveying success to others. So, one of the thing is that when people express pride it is also expressed as some kind of success. So, you are conveying that something you have achieved, some kind of successes you have achieved. So, it is a communication of success is one of the reasons why people show pride. Ensuring that the individual status within the group is maintained and they have access to the resources managed by the group. It conveys primarily success and the status uh, that your status is maintained or at least you know it is it is kind of you know uh, and uh, it, your resources are also maintained from the evolutionary perspective. Studies have shown even in chimpanzees in dominant position perform and displays the resemble those of pride humans. Even some primates like you know uh, chimpanzees can also express pride maybe in some uh, very similar form to the human beings. So, that kind of supports some kind of evolutionary basis to it. Experiments in the lab also indicates that manipulating feelings of pride can increase status related behavior. So, one of the even experiments also shows that pride is associated with status related behavior. So, pride also conveys your status, your successes, even experimental studies also shows that. For example, in one of the studies participants uh, who received positive feedback that induced feelings of pride were perceived by others as having higher status and were considered more likable compared to those who did not experience such feeling. Okay. So, this is just the finding of the experiment that was done where the participant who received some positive feedback just to induce the sense of pride some positive feedback that they have done something good or some some kind of statements which supported and given them positive feedback and that induced a sense of pride in that those participants uh, and uh, that sense of you know pride which was kind of induced artificially in the laboratory situation led to other people other participants uh, believe or perceive that they have higher status and were considered more likable as compared to those who did not experience such feelings. So, so just artificially induced induction of sense of pride led to the change of perception of people. So, that was kind of evident in that study. So, pride conveys status, successes and those kind of things. So, this is the kind of function of this emotion. Pride appears to be associated with the acquisition of status as it motivates the development of competence and self confidence. This is what we have uh, kind of discussed also that it is it's, it's associated with the acquisition of status. On the other hand, hubris the negative aspects of pride which is associated with arrogance and egoism might have evolved it has also evolved probably to facilitate status attainment because you are uh, kind of also you know you kind of expressing kind of dominance but through a different more socially 
more socially expensive method. Socially expensive method basically means that it, it, it has cost involved in it that other people may reject you, other people may not like you. So, that cost is involved in the hubris, but still the purpose of hubris is that the person he himself is kind of himself or herself whatever uh, is kind of expressing the status. Hubris may encourage the attainment of status through the use of dominance. Here, the root is dominance and aggression rather than competence. So, in general uh, sense of pride, it may be associated with the achievement and sense of competence that you have that kind of leads to the sense of status and achievement. In case of hubris, it is more of dominance, you know by forcing people or dominating people you are expressing that you are better or you have higher status or you are in the more achievement position whatever it is. So, the through dominance hubri is expressed through competence normal pride is expressed you know. So, the root may be different, but ultimately both are trying to express success and status. So, in essence pride promotes prestige while hubris promote dominance. So, th th these are the two distinct ways of achieving high status position. So, the routes and pathways are different. So, uh, this is something about pride and the function of the pride. So, this was a self evaluative emotion and along with pride we have discussed in the last class guilt, shame and embarrassment. So, these are all self evaluative emotions, this arises out of your own evaluation. Guilt, shame, embarrassment typically are associated with negative self evaluation, pride is generally associated with positive self evaluation. Now, we will be talking about the another self category of self conscious emotion, because these are also associated with your sense of self, but here uh, these are called as social comparison emotion, here this kind of emotion arises out of comparison with other people. These are not just based on your own evaluation of yourself, but how do you compare yourself with others that leads to also certain kind of emotions. So, in this uh, particularly context, we will be talking about two social comparison emotion, one is envy and another is jealousy. So, social com comparison emotion is another type of self conscious emotion that refers to the feeling that emotion that arises when individual compare themselves with other. Now, this comparison can be on various aspects of life such as your appearance, people can compare their appearance with other people, whether they look better than other people or not. It could be based on abilities, whether you are more skilled than others. It could be based on certain achievements in life, how you are, how, how you see your achievement as compared to others. Possessions, whatever the material possessions you have, social status and so on. Okay. So, typically uh, we can compare ourselves with various dimensions of as dimensions of life okay? and uh, mostly people compare themselves with other similar group of people. People generally do not compare with just anybody. Generally our social comparison process is more linked with people who are similar to us or in the same social group or people who are in the peer group because they are most we see them most of the time. So, our comparison process are mostly associated with peer group or people who are of similar some sense similar to us. So, that comparison has much more impact. So, this kind of social comparison processes can also lead to certain complex emotions. Envy and jealousy are both emotion that arises when we compare themselves. Now, this emotion do not arise out of your own just self evaluation. They need to have some comparison with other people, otherwise you one cannot experience envy or jealousy. So, this both emotion arises when we compare ourselves with others uh, and specially this arises with when we compare others with others who are some has, has some sense of better outcomes, someone else good fortune you know. So, that is why it has also kind of uh, some kind of negative connotation to it, Maybe it, it, it also has some positive aspects we will be looking at that. So, typically when experiencing these emotions an individual compares their personality, appearance, abilities and other qualities to those of another person with particular social context and this comparison plays a crucial role in triggering the emotions. So, whenever we compare ourselves with others it triggers certain emotions depending on how you are comparing, what you are comparing. 
So, if you compare yourself with other and you find yourself lacking something, obviously it will lead to certain negative emotions, you know. So, we will see, we'll discuss envy and jealousy in specific, how it, how it is a result of com social comparison. So, the social comparison emotions are closely tied to the process of social comparison. So, it arises out of comparison, that is why they are called as social comparison emotions. So, the social comparison emotion can be both positive negative, it as I said, it depends on how you are comparing. It can lead to positive emotion as well as it can lead to negative emotions. Depending on the outcomes of the comparison and how individuals perceive themselves in relation to others. So, if you see yourself doing better than someone else, probably you will feel happier. You will feel more happiness in terms of saying that I am doing better than the another. Or if you feel or perceive that you are, you are in some way less than someone else, or some aspect you lack something as compared to other, it may lead to some kind of lack of self-esteem or negative emotions like sadness and so on. So, it can lead to either positive emotion, negative emotion depending on how you are comparing, what you are comparing, uh, it will depend on lot of these factors. Now, typically when we do social comparison, it could be of two categories, either one is called as upward, upward social comparison and another is called as downward social comparison. So, when we talk about upward social comparison, basically it occurs when individual compare themselves to others who are perceived as superior in certain sense. When you compare yourself with another person whom you perceive as superior to you, who are better than you, then it is called upward. So, your comparison target is upward, it is above than you. Uh, whether that person is actually above than you or superior than you is, 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 is not the main thing. It is your perception which is most more important in comparison. So, if you perceive that person as superior or better than you, then it becomes an upward social comparison. So, it is more about perception rather than the actuality because we live in our perceptual world. So, the way we think that will determine the outcomes, not the actuality of the outcome. So, in reality that person may not be superior, but you think that person is superior then your thinking will determine your emotion, not the actuality. So, the perception plays more important role here. So, this upward social comparison can lead to various emotions such as envy, jealousy, even admiration can happen if, if you kind of like the person with whom you are making comparison. So, sometimes some persons are better than us, but you like that person. So, then you can admire that person. You may not feel jealousy in all context but it depends on what is your relationship with that person, you know. So, if that person you had, uh, it can also lead to positive emotions in some sense, if, if in, even in the case of upward social comparison, if probably you like that person or so. <coughs> For example, feeling of envious of a friend's academic success, one can feel envy of academic success of a friend or you can admire a colleague's professional achievement, depending on how you judge that person. So, within the upward social comparison, positive negative emotions can also happen. The downward social comparison is just opposite to that, opposite to the upward social comparison. Here, uh, individuals compare themselves to others whom they perceive as less fortunate or less capable. So, they are, you, cons you kind of perceive that other person is inferior to you. Again, here it is the perception what is important. So, here the perception is very important. You perceive that person as inferior, actuality may be something else, you know. So, that is not important, how you perceive. So, if you perceive other person as inferior, it is downward social comparison. This emotion can lead to uh, something like relief, satisfaction. Uh, for example, feeling of relief that one's financial situation is better than someone else or your neighbor. So, you may feel good about it. Even in downward social comparison, sometimes negative emotion can also happen. If you like someone very strongly, like your, let us say your siblings or your someone or friend who is very close to you, if they are doing inferior or so, so you, if they are doing in, in certain aspects of it, their life, they are kind of a little bit lower as compared to yourself, if you perceive they are kind of, you know not doing as good as you, probably you may feel bad because you like them, you want them to do better. So, 
in the downward social comparison also sometimes can lead to negative emotions also. Positive is more evident obviously, most of the time positive emotions may happen in downward social comparison because you feel good that as compared to someone else you are doing better. Upward social comparison again mostly it leads to negative emotional experiences because you feel you are inferior to someone else, but it can lead to positive emotion also depending on your relationship with the target person. So, let us talk about envy as an emotion. Again, this is a social comparison emotion because it arises when we compare um, ourselves with others. So, how it arises? Let us see about this emotion. So, envy is a very complex emotion because all self-conscious emotions are complex because it requires a lot of kind of processing. Then it, it results as a as a, it is a resultant of complex cognitive processing. So, it arises when a person desires something possessed by someone else. So, whenever a person desires to get something which the other person has have. So, it could be possessions, it could be even achievements of other people, qualities of other people, success of other people and the person feels discontent or resentment towards the other person. Okay. So, then the envy is the result. So, there is a sense of resentment towards the other individual. Uh, that you feel that you lack something that that person ha has. It could be some material, it could be some successes, it could be some status, whatever it is. You see this person has something that you do not have and you feel a sense of lack, sense of resentment. So, that emotion is called as envy. Whenever you compare yourself with another person and feel you lack some mat some things that, that the person has. So, it's, it is always in the context of possession of something that the other person has that you do not have. So, that is called as an envy as an emotion arises mostly in that context. So, it is often characterized by feeling of inadequacy. You feel inadequate because you lack something because you think the other person has something that you want to have, but you do not have uh, or a sense of being deprived or lacking in comparison to the person who possesses what is. So, it is always in comparison to another person. This emotion always arises when you compare your with someone else and mostly in the context of someone else possesses something that you do not have. So, envy can be both negative and powerful emotions. Okay? On the one hand, it can uh, motivate individual to improve themselves. Sometimes it can be a positive motivator also that when you see you lack something and you try to improve upon that. So, it can motivate you in some time in the positive directions. It can lead to negative aspects also or strive for the goals as they aspire to achieve what others have. Now, envy can be mostly negative consequences. It can be associated with negative consequences such as feelings of bitterness, hostility and strained relationship with person who is envied. Mostly this is what we see in the context of envy, but some sometimes in the undercurrent of this envy as an emotion can lead motivate you to do better in life to get so that you also have things that other person have. So, probably you know in that sense it has some positive aspects to it, but mostly it can lead to emotionally lot of negative emotions such as bitterness, hostility and it always leads to some negative aspects in the relationship of with that person, because you may feel you lack something as compared to that person. So, that bitterness can come in the relationship. Chronic envy means for a Sometimes you see somebody something and uh, some kind of temporary envy is, is fine, it is okay, but it can happen. But chronic envy, in a sense, you know, all the time you are comparing yourself with others and it is going on for a long time. So, those kind of envy could be very detrimental to one's mental well being and can hinder personal growth and contentment. So, you, the person who has envy, cannot be contented in that sense, you know satisfaction will not happen. You will be always feel you lack something, you should only get something, acquire something as com so the other person has, then only you will feel happy. So, that sense of discontent will always be there. So, it can impact your mental health very negatively. If it is a chronic kind of obsessive kind of envy, uh, that can all obviously can lead to various negative emotionally as well as you know in, in terms of overall mental health and well-being. Research suggests that we are more likely to envy those people who are similar to us. So, envy is again uh, our comparison process as I said is mostly we do with people who are similar to us in some ways. One cannot just 
a middle class person will not compare him or her with let's say somebody who is a super rich who is a billionaire no it doesn't make sense because the, the this person is is something some other level so generally we, uh, people don't compare with somebody who is very different who is kind of way ahead of themselves but somehow you know so because it make doesn't make sense they the, the, that person is some somehow not in the radar so we most of the time people compare themselves with other who are very similar to us your neighbors your peer group who whom with with whom you interact and so on your colleagues and those kind of things you know that kind of comparison mostly happens for example you know this uh, this study was done on uh, bank employees no showbrook and lamb study and uh, their research found that you know employees who perceive themselves as similar to their promoted colleagues experience more envy so employees who got promoted and the some employees get promoted some don't all the time this happens in most of the job situation so the employees who kind of perceive they are very similar to the person who got promoted the envy experience was much higher as com- in those contexts when they compare perceive they are very similar to us i should have also got you know because very similar similarity aspect is there so envy was experienced more so this shows man we compare more with people who are very similar to us simply because you have you can compare because there's because of the similarity you cannot just compare with apple and orange oranges you know if something two people are very different and totally different in the in the ladder of success and other thing then you know there is no meaning in comparing so comparison mostly happens in the people who are similar to us similar to pride envy can be also categorized in two types pride is as we have seen authentic pride and hubris one is negative one is positive similarly here also we can kind of compare or kind of categorize envy as two types one is benign envy means it's a normal envy where you are not really becoming too bitter and leading to all the negative consequences and one is malicious envy which can be very negative people can have different range of you know envy experiences some can be very benign mild some can be very malicious so in that sense you know it can range in certain aspect so benign envy and malicious envy so these here are some of the differences that i have kind of tried to put in the tabular form benign envy as the name suggests it is more milder so person is not really engulfed by the emotion rather it is a more milder form malicious is more negative and more harmful very intensely envious about somebody you know it will kind of engulf that person it will uh, take away a lot of energy of that person you know so very more negative and harmful benign envy is mostly involve feelings of desire to have what someone else so there obviously envy is about desiring what other people have but without all too much of ill intention and harmful action towards it there will be some intention but it will not be very ill intention or not person will not harm other individual mentally some kind of experience one will have but it will not translate into actions and doing all these negative things malicious envy on the other hand is desiring uh, someone uh, what desiring what someone else has but also experiencing negative emotions such as lot of resentment anger hostility re- sometimes people take revenge towards the persons uh, to that extent person can go taking revenge and really becoming aggressive and all these kinds of thing can happen we all might have experienced such kind of things you know so it could be very ex- other extreme of envy so benign envy is sometimes can it could lead to a positive kind of uh, it kind of propel or you no know, motivate people positively uh, and it can drive people for self improvement so you can see that other pe- person has achieved something so you it can motivate that i also want to go get there so in that sense it can <coughs> motivate people in the positive direction malicious envy always is harmful and the person rather than trying to improve themselves they will try to undermine the other person and try to degrade them with their gossips with their actions and so on so the person undermines the other person's success or happiness 
so they will try to find negativities with that person gossips around uh, negative about that person so that they feel good about themselves so in some way they will try to you know undermine the other person's successes or uh, whatever achievement they have so it always leads to negative as negative emotions and outcomes so benign envy may not harm others relationship you know it may not be really expressed very strongly malicious envy will always harm the relationship with the other person with lot of destructive behavior such as gossip spreading rumors engaging in sabotaging other people's sub- successes and so on so what causes the feelings of hostility in envy situation you know why in one case uh, the envy become malicious and in other case it is just a benign kind of envy so what factors determine that so some of the research shows that you know believe that the envied person has had an unfair advantage in life leads to the feeling of hostility so whenever mostly people f- feel that other person has some unfair advantage and they got ahead of that them because of some unfair advantages that can lead to hostility and you know, a lot of this negative aspects of envy if two individuals who are alike and have very different outcome very similar but in terms of success one has achieved high and one could not let's say in terms of outcomes the individual who is less successful may view the more successful individuals having unfair advantage he may feel envious simply by looking at that this person has got some advantage some unfair advantages which helped him to go into success and he could not he or she could not so that belief that kind of perception that kind of thought processes can lead to malicious envies so it is important to note that what perceive here so all the time in psychology we perception thought processes are more important than the actuality actuality that person might have did lot of hard work and achieve something other person may perceive that is he has got some unfair advantages somebody has helped him or supported him unfairly so it may lead to all these kind of malicious envies and so on whether or not the envied person deserve the, their success is irrelevant so actually what is happening is irrelevant it is their perception that is more important if it is perceived as an unfair advantage the less successful individual may experience hostility and animosity so it's all in the mind not the actual situation so so we have been talking about different emotions and all the time we are talking about functions of different emotions so let's see what are the functions of envy so envy according to evolutionary psychologist serve the purpose of recognizing that one has fallen behind so people this is an emotion that kind of let lead them to realize or it kind of stimulates that realization within the person that they have fallen behind as compared to their counterparts or competitors in the world with limited resources and taking action in response so it is an emotion that is kind of stimulating the feeling that you lack something and work towards it so that function it has evolutionary sense the differentiation between benign and malicious and we may lead to one to believe that one is more beneficial than the other the research indicates it's true benign envy may be good in some sense because it propels uh, people in the right direction malicious envy can kind of uh, lead to lot of negative outcomes so the major function that envy does is that it gives you a kind of realization that you lack something as compared to your competitor or peer group and uh, you try to go ahead and with that realization so evolutionary it does this kind of function so uh, Van de Ven and colleagues conducted a study with a Dutch participant and where they are uh, you know asked about their experiences of envy so this was a study that was conducted on envy as an emotion to understand uh, so that there, their uh, results indicate that that the participant who experienced benign envy towards someone means mild envy not of that malicious nature the participant who experienced this kind of envy they tend to like and admire them more so generally this did not lead to lot of negative emotions so in many cases they even admired the parts other person although they they reported feelings of frustrations by 
comparing themselves with other they experience some frustration because they lack something they were also motivated to improve themselves and become more like the envied person so that motivation was associated with benign envy and uh, that uh, motivated them to become more like that person and achieve what that person has in contrast those who experience malicious envy also reported frustrations but they also felt that an injustice had occurred and desired uh, desired to degrade or harm the envied person so in the case of malicious envies the participant reported a frustrations frustration is also there in this case but here the emotions are very different the kind of mental interpretation is very different here the people also feel that they had some injustice has occurred that person has achieve something that they could have also but some injustice has happened and they desire to degrade the other person so that that is the most problematic part of malicious envy that you try to degrade the other person rather than improving yourself so you put all your energy to degrade the other person and feel good about yourself in other case you see the other person in some other uh, in in a in somewhere above you and you try to go there or achieve that so that is the basic difference so malicious envy is always you know leads to negative outcomes so this study suggests that benign envy also leads to self imp improvement and acquisition of new skills while malicious envy may not so benign envy caused by upward social comparison can motivate and enhance performance as the study indicated uh, indicated that other success can be inspiring and a cause for greater effort towards improvement so every emotion can be directed positively or negatively it all depends on how you perceive things so let's talk about now jealousy as an emotion so this is another another social comparison emotion that arises when you compare yourself with others it does not arise just based on your own evaluation always other person has to be there again jealousy is a complex emotion very powerful emotion that people experience uh, by individuals when they perceive a threat to a valued relationship or a sense of rivalry with others whenever a people feel some kind of threat in relationships so you have a relationship with someone and you feel another person is a threat to this relationship jealousy can come out or jealousy can be uh, instigated by such kind of uh, threat perception or mostly in the case of when where there is a sense of rivalry with other people some kind of uh, rivalry with some another person so mostly in those contexts jealousy as an emotion arises it involves a mixed feelings it may include fear anger insecurity anxiety all these kinds of complex emotion can be experienced when we experience jealousy as an emotion so jealousy it's itself is an emotion but this can also be associated with many other emotions like anger insecurity anxiety and so on so jealousy can arise in various contexts such as romantic relationship friendships family dynam dynamics between siblings or competitive situation like in the work life co-workers colleagues and so on so it can happen in so many contexts children as young as toddlers can be observed to experience jealousy sometime even um, very young children can also experience jealousy when they perceive a loss of parental attention towards someone else and attention to and they attempt to interrupt the ongoing attention that they find undesirable even children sometimes can experience some kind of jealousy when they for example mostly in the context of parental attention so they want the attention of the parent maybe mother's attention and uh, they try to disrupt the mother's attention towards something else if they think the mother is or the parent is not is not giving attention to them because they are paying attention to something else children may try to disrupt that attention by doing something by crying or showing some tantrum or something the basic idea is the child is trying to attract attention so if the parents attention goes towards someone else particularly so this could be a kind of you know in a very simple simple form of jealousy that even children can experience so some of the key features of jealousy as an emotion is that our jealousy is always associated with some kind of threat that you feel some relationship is threat because of someone else another person so 
typically emerges when individuals perceive a threat to something they value, mostly in the relationship context, such as romantic partners, affection, you think there is a threat or someone else is kind of a threat. So, jealousy can arise. Then it is also associated with fear of loss because threat is always associated with loss. These are kind of connected to one another. So, core of jealousy is the fear of losing the desired person or possession to a rival competitor. So, you fear that you will be lose, you lose your relationship or the person whatever relationship you have to someone else. So, that fear of loss is always there. Fear can trigger very strong emotional reaction and distress. So, perceived threat is there, fear of loss is there in, in the jealousy. Sense of possessiveness will also be there, mostly in the it happens in the relationship context where the person often feel possessive and fear that you know the other the person and they, they desire to protect once whatever one consider as their own. So, it can lead to a sense of ownership over the person or thing leading to a controlling behavior. Insecurity, jealousy can also be driven by underlying feeling of inadequacy or self esteem, low self esteem. Individual may feel unworthy of the affection or attention they desire. Maybe it can be also triggered by uh, jealousy situation. So, leading to jealousy when they perceive someone else as a threat. So, the basically most of these ideas are connected to each other. So, how do you distinguish between these two emotions? You know, many times people kind of synonymously use them. They may say, I am jealousy, I am jealous of something and it may be actually an envy situation. So, in day to day language people generally mix both of them, but what is that in terms of technical aspects how they are different from each other. So, envy and jealousy actually two distinct emotion, they are very, they are different emotion, not the same emotion, although they often use interchangeably in the everyday language, mostly everyday language may we mix envy and jealousy. So, to understand that let us understand a scenario. So, let us say somebody has a or person, some person has a curly hair that they f that person feel is not as desirable or beautiful as they would be like to say so they feel their hair is not as good as they desire it to be and they feel that their friend has a beautiful silky hair that seems to be perfect. So, it is a kind of in the context of hair some comparison is happening and you wish you had a hair like your friends, but it is not possible because your hair is different than the your uh, whatever your friends. So, that comparison because of this comparison what kind of emotion you would feel is is it envy or is it a jealous jealous of your friend friends hair or something like that. Which emotion is in this context arising. So, if you have understood the, dis the discussion of the envy as a as, as an emotion. So, envy is mostly happens in the context of some possession of material that somebody has something that you do not have then in those contexts envy happens. So, in this case if you see it is uh, with this hard possession of someone else that is here in this context. So, the this situation is actually the situation of envy in this particular example it is not a jealousy situation. So, what are the differences? Let us see more detailed differences. So, in envy it is more about desire for what someone else possesses. So, it is about possessing something. So, you desire some something that others have. In jealousy it is mostly fear of losing a valued relationship to a rival. It is mostly happens in the context of relationship of a rival to a rival. So, there is a relationship between two person and there is a third person who is a threat. Jealousy arises in that context, not mostly in the possession of something or other thing. So, this is the basic difference. So, so in the earlier example, it was a possession of some something like hair in this context. So, envy is the case, not the jealousy. So, focus of envy is possession, achievement, advantages. Focus of jealousy is relationship or emotional bond is the focus. In the case of envy, there is no perceived threat to the relationship as such because the relationship is not directly involved here. It is more about possessing something that other has. In case of jealousy, perceived threat to the relationship is the main aspect. Emotion towards the person in case of envy, no inherent animosity towards the person as such directly, but it is more focused what the other person possesses. It may lead to some kind of 
negative emotions and so on. But that is not necessarily all the time it will be associated with. In case of jealousy, it will be mixed emotion including anger, resentment and so on. So, and so example of an envy is that you can be envious of a friend's new car or in case of jealousy, example will be the jealous of a partner's close friendship. So, if your partner has a close friendship with someone else, you may feel jealous of it. So, mostly in the relationship context, it expresses. Envy, you could be envious of someone's car, someone's watch, someone's hair or someone, whatever it is. Mostly in the case of some possession of something. But jealousy is more of relationship oriented aspect. So, that is the difference between these two emotions. So, envy is experienced in situation involving two people, mostly in the case of two people. So, you and there is an, another person possesses something and you want to have that or you desire to have that. So, a relationship always is between two individuals. Okay. So, it is between two individuals where desire a specific attribute that another person has. On the other hand, jealousy is more complex emotion, dynamic involves triangle of relationship. So, there is a three individuals at least involved in it. It arises when we perceive a threat to a special relationship we believe we have. So, you have a relationship with a person, another person. So, there are two individuals here. There is a relationship between person, these two individuals and there is a third person who is a threat, which we fear would be taken away by a third individual. So, it involves three person in situation most of the time. Relationship between two individuals, third person as a threat. So, that could be uh, mostly in the jealousy situation, that is how it is different. Envy situation, it is mostly between two individuals and possession of something. So, Smith, Kim and Parrot in 1988, they conducted an experiment where participants described times when they were jealous and envy. So, they tried to distinguish in terms of people's understanding of how they see envy and jealousy, what are the differences in the qualities and the and the and the they kind of coded how when the people describe jealousy, when they describe envy, how they are different. So, that was the purpose of the uh, study and their finding shows that individual used envy specifically to refer to situations. So, mostly when people discussed envy, they talked about uh, uh, situations where they felt someone had something that they desired as per the definition that we have discussed, but they did not have. So, desiring of something that other people have such as a personal quality possession or an achievement. So, this that quality could be anything, it could be some material possession, it could be some success, achievement, possessions and so on. In recalling situations of jealousy, they describe classic scenarios where they believed a significant relationship was threatened by a rival. So, their study actually shows even laymen, normal people also could distinguish between these two and the situation that led to these two emotions were different in their understanding also. So, in the same study, they also analyze the rating of the feelings that they characterize the two states indicate that jealousy and envy are quite distinct when many fine grained emotions are cons considered. They also try to understand when you experience envy as an emotion or jealousy as an emotion, what are the emotional experiences you go through and they try to distinguish between these two emotions and uh, they kind of found they are different. So, here it is kind of you know, it is a kind of uh, you know findings taken from that study itself. Smith et al. 1988, they showed that participant associated some different feelings for each of these emotions. For uh, jealousy, people uh, reported when they experience jealousy, they also experience suspicion, rejection, hostility, anger, fear of loss, hurt, cheated, desire to get even, resentment, spite, malice, intensity and so on. So, these are the different emotions they reported in the context of jealousy. In the context of envy, they reported motivation to improve, wishful, longing, sometimes they feel inferior also. Uh, they also felt self-awareness, more self-critical, they become more self-critical. They also experience dissatisfaction, frustration and so on. So, in terms of fine-grained emotional experiences also, the participant could distinguish between these two emotions. So, they are not same, they are different in various dimensions of them. 
So, generally lay people acknowledge a difference between the two states with envy being characterized by sense of longing and inferiority and a motivation to improve whereas, jealousy involves more rejection, suspicion and anger. So, these are the differences that we have already discussed. Hence, even though individuals tend to use jealousy more generally, jealousy word is mostly used more generally and mostly people use it inaccurately. Then envy, lay person reported that states can could be distinguished you know. They can be distinguished even lay person can understand the difference, but jealousy as a term is used more and in many contexts where it is envy people use them as a jealousy as an as an emotion. So, they mix most most of the time. One of the reason why they mix it more, more or why people use jealousy as more could be uh, what jealousy is used in situation that entail envy in many cases because people dislike the moral connotation associated with envy. Envy has lot of moral con connotations, morally seen as very negative. So, people do not like to say that I am envious. Jealousy people generally it is accepted or okay? one can be jealous of something, but envy as an emotion is has much more strong moral connotation. So, people do not want to kind of accept or say that they are envious uh, because of this moral connotation. Therefore, in many uh, countries and cultures, there may be more strong reluctance to use this word envy to describe feeling because it has historically been considered as a sin or morally inappropriate emotion. So, this could lead people more to use jealousy as compared to envy, but they are very different. What are the consequences of jealousy as an emotion? What happens? Uh, some of the things we have already discussed. Young, Young and Lee in 2018, they summarized some possible consequences of jealousy. So, as we have already seen, uh, it is associated with many distinct negative feelings. Some of these things we have already discussed. Jealousy can lead to various negative emotions, associated emotions. It can lead to outrage and betrayal, mostly because it is in the context of relationship. When you lose a beloved to someone else, when in a relationship that is expected to be exclusive. So, when you feel that someone else has entered into a relationship, it can lead to sense of outrage, sense of betrayal, yes of emotions it can happen. People may also experience paranoia and fear when they feel a threat to potential loss. They feel this, there is a potential to loss, something can happen in future. It can lead to sense of fear, sense of paranoia. Uh, when people uh, feel actual loss has already happened, when then people may feel sadness, depression, embarrassment, humiliation and so on. When they people feel actual loss of a beloved to a rival, this can lead to this kind of emotions. Jealousy can also lead to a range of destructive behavior. When people experience jealousy, it can lead to various destructive emotions, particularly very strong jealousy when people feel. It can lead to self-harm through substance abuse as a means of distraction or seeking alternate resources of pleasure. People may get into self harm, lot of like self abusive behavior, substance abuse and so on. People can also con inconvenience or harm others through acts of suspicion, acquisition, stalking and violence, especially whoever is perceived as a threat, people can uh, harm them through some suspicious acts of suspicion, acquiescing them stalking them or some violent behavior. It can also lead to spousal battering, violence between husband and wife, lot of these cases happens because of jealousy, uh, battering and intimate partner violence ranging from minor slaps to brutal beating and even murder. So, lot of such cases could happen in, in, a, in an intimate relationship whenever jealousy has happened because of a third person, it can lead to spousal battering intimate violence in terms of slapping or you know physically abusing people to even murder also lot of murder cases. So, to that extent it can go. So, lot of destructive behavior can happen or emerge as a result of jealousy as an emotion. Number 3 jealousy reaction can lead to sometimes some cases some positive outcomes such that it serves as a reminder to stop talking people one's partner for granted. So, people sometimes it can lead to some positive aspects also in sense when you feel a threat in relationship, you may, ne, may, no, may no longer take that relationship for granted. So, you can give more importance to that relationship. So, some positive aspect could be associated with it also, but mostly it is negative. 
while few studies only propose that it could lead to some positive reverse but overwhelming majority of research indicate that jealousy has a negative aspects effects on psychological well being and relationships mostly it leads to negative uh, aspects now evolutionary what is the basis or function of jealousy why people are jealous in the evolutionary sense what function it does so evolutionary basis of jealousy emotion is rooted in the need for mate retention and reproductive success so why very deeply people are ingrained for jealousy as an emotion so it the root is on the mate retention you want to retain your partner and for reproductive successes so it kind of serves as a protective function in terms of relationship from the evolutionary perspective jealousy emerges as a mechanism to address the challenges associated with ensuring partner's faithfulness and protecting one investment in the relationship so it it's a kind of emotion that motivates you to protect your relationship to become more faithful and so on research support this notion through various lot of various findings uh some of these findings are like this you know mate retention strategy so uh, evolutionary function wise so so so, so many various evolutionary psychologists like bus uh, he also found that you know jealousy serves as a mate retention strategy to deter partners from engaging in infidelity so this kind of become makes people more vigilant towards protecting the relationship it also serves as a function for paternal certainty evolutionary psychologists proposes that men may experience sexual jealousy due to connection concerned about paternity certainty so generally there is a difference between male and female in terms of how they what the underlying cause for jealousy as an emotion for male it could be more of a sexual jealousy in terms of romantic relationships uh men tend to be more jealous of sexual infidelity as it directly affects their reproductive success so this is more concern male related oriented concern from the evolutionary perspective from the female part it is more of an emotional security perspective a uh, woman may experience more emotional jealousy as emotional infidelity poses a threat to the emotional security and long term relationship stability that is more concern for females research by harris 2004 supports the notion that highlight that women are more sensitive to emotional betrayal and may male are more towards sexual infidelity and so on so there could be gender difference in that sense but the ultimate purpose is to protect the relationship it's an emotion that serves the function of protecting uh, relationships which are important particularly in the context of reproductive success and so on so it is essential to recognize that while jealousy may have adaptive functions in our evolutionary past excessive the problem with human beings that you know evolutionary it does some purpose but human beings always goes beyond the evolutionary functions we become add too much to it we make it more excessive more exaggerated that's the problem with human beings you know evolutionary it has its functions but it things can become much more complex in the human world especially because of their thought processes and their complexities in the social world uh, so that can create problem uh, excessive or irrational jealousy can have detrimental effect so this excessive and irrational thing can happen only in human world because of our thought processes so it can detrimental to psychological and social well being and relationship aspects as indicated by lot of researches this can uh, be detrimental and it really hampers the relationship and so on therefore understanding and managing jealousy in a healthy and constructive manner is essential to modern social context obviously this is true for all the emotions understanding them this is what in this course we are trying to understand some of this important emotion we are trying to understand the diverse aspects to it so that we understand it and understanding is the first step to manage it so management of emotion and other thing will be talking more practical aspects later on uh, but understanding is the first step so that is what we are doing in uh, explaining lot of this individual emotions so that we understand them in a much better what are the functions of these emotions and uh, we can constructively and more healthy way we can manage them for enhancing the quality of our life so that is what the main purpose of it so with this i stop here uh, today's lecture so this is uh, all about self conscious emotion in the next module we'll be talking about some other aspects thank you mm-hmm.